Hello and welcome back to CGTV and more specifically ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to probably a video featuring the most unpopular car I've ever had on the channel. But before you buy your next car, make sure you're using Car Vertical to uncover any form of hidden damage, mileage discrepancies, recalls, imports, exports, and other hidden nasties you'd really want to know about before spending your hard earned money. All you got to do, type in your reg at carvertical.com and it'll pull up a huge report featuring all the information you really need to know before you buy your next car. You really are missing out if you don't do this before you buy your next car. Use the code TGE and you'll save money on your report as well. For example, look at this Audi R8. It would look absolutely spot on and perfect sat in a showroom. However, it has got a murky history. And the person that pulled this report up did not get stung because they found out before they bought their car. Anyway, use the code TGE on the screen for your car vertical report. Save some money and don't get ripped off when you buy your next car. Let's go and check out the worst car in my garage. Right then, let's get this video underway then. Here is my Tesla. It's back on the channel. I do get a lot of questions about the Tesla and a lot of hate actually. There are a lot of you petrol heads out there that abuse me because I drive a Tesla on a daily basis. The amount of grief I get for having this thing, I actually didn't expect it. And I don't fully understand it. I think some of it's just grief for having an EV in general. And I get the point. I get it that making one of these isn't that environmentally friendly. I get it mining cobalt and nickel and lithium and whatever it is that makes batteries. I get that. I get that it's not that environmentally friendly. And versus just driving around in an old car and recycling it and keeping it on the road versus ordering a brand new car, I get that it's not that environmentally friendly. And I didn't buy this to greenwash. I didn't buy this to make out that I come Mother Teresa. I bought this because I just needed a no frills appliance to get around in. And actually, by and large, apart from the original hiccup, which we'll go into and how that was resolved, this has been the perfect daily companion. I do want to preface as well, having an EV isn't that bad if you've got home charging. I've got home charging here. Unfortunately, it's literally only a little plug at the moment, so it's super slow. I'll only do about 20, 30% overnight. Pretty crap, but if you wage a war of attrition against it, it's actually not so bad. So yes, here we go. The state of the car is reprehensible, to be honest. You can see that whilst I don't hate it, I also don't care about it at all. It's not something that I'm hugely bothered about. In fact, I've driven into bins on my driveway um, and not really been that bothered about it. We've, we've lost some paint there, ladies and gents. Um, and we've got some gravel and stuff that's gone in there as well. Um, I've cracked the splitter on the front, my Maxon design splitter, I've cracked that as well. A um, Couple of little marks on the wheels, but on the whole, it's not something that I really treasure. I don't deliberately break it, uh, but it's, it's not something that I'm actually that bothered about. If I nip it or get a little bit of damage on it, it's really not something that I'm hugely bothered about. Behind then you will see, they've got my RS in here. The garage is filthy. It needs sorting out. It needs actually a full refurb. We've got all sorts of detritus down here. I'm not quite sure what that is actually. I don't know if that's rat, what is that? I don't know. Anyway, you'll see the floor needs redoing. The walls need plasterboarding. Ceiling's actually pretty good to be honest. Ceiling's good, doesn't leak from the top. Does leak under the doors though, and I've got these strips down just to stop stuff blowing in under the doors, but before winter I'm gonna have to do something proper with that and get some heating put in here. But, here we go. Both cars are in here, not the most elegant solution. That's literally just me bodging things from stuff I found in B&Q, so hence it looks like a two-year-old has done it. Anyway, back to the Tesla. I have an ingenious technique with the Tesla. <laughs> Uh, I actually don't know whether I should be showing you this. This is the state of the car. Look at this, look at it. Has anyone got a messier car than that? This is not my seat, I don't sit in this one. Um, Connie sits in this one, Anthony sits in this one, and it's complete hell. Although, I should take some responsibility, I'm not going to, but yeah, that's the state of it in here. And there is quite an important safety mechanism for this. I'll show you in the back of here. <laughs> I promise you guys, I am actually okay. I promise I don't need an intervention. Everything's okay. I'm not having a meltdown. But actually, where I leave this, I leave it all over the place. And no one breaks into it. Because cars with tinted windows, particularly SUVs in London, they get broken into. But with this, I deliberately leave rubbish in the back and a dog towel thing like that. People look in here, they see the rubbish, and it's never been broken into. And it's always 
always just left lying around in London in the worst places imaginable. No one ever breaks in. There's visible litter in the boot as well. There we go. And on the security front as well, Pandora have said they've never had an incident of a Tesla being stolen. I just don't think you can steal these. And another cool thing this thing does, I'll show you this. You've got this thing called sentry mode. So actually all round the car, it's got cameras. Oh God, oh no. And when you come back to the car, if anyone's been anywhere near it, it will show you in sentry mode from multiple angles all around the car, which is really good for being on the driveway, but also when you're leaving it elsewhere. And the other thing as well, if someone crashes into you, this thing will record just before the accident and actually keep the footage of any accident as well. So really, really, really good. On the whole though, like it's just, I didn't like it to begin with, this thing. I kind of just fell out with it to begin with, but now I do really like it. I'm really enjoying it. I couldn't really live without it, to be honest with you. Everything's just so intuitive. You don't have a screen there. It's all just on here. I do really rate Tesla's. I'm not an Elon fanboy, but I do actually genuinely really rate it. It's done now 8,732 miles. I'm actually gonna obscure what I called the car. <laughs> Excuse my grubby nail, I was cleaning the car earlier. Uh, I'm obscuring what I called the car. It begins with a C, um, but that's what I named it back when I fell out with it. I actually need to change that, so I will do. Um, but that's the mileage, the VIN numbers below as well. I'm not gonna give you that, but quite cool. It does over the air updates, I'm very happy. So what's it like to drive on a daily basis? I don't actually know what to tell you, to be honest. It, it's an appliance, it moves, it gets me from A to B. It's relatively comfortable, it's spacious, the sound system's decent. Uh, no real gripes, to be honest with you. Does it handle well? It doesn't handle that badly. Is it fast? I mean, this is only the base model. It's literally a base model with zero options. It's fast enough. Look, for a daily driver, I never want anything fast. I never care about having anything fast. And it's got enough get up and go mid range that it's more than enough. The only thing that I don't like in daily drivers is not having any mid-range torque to get out of situations on motorways, things like that, where someone's being a prat, and this has got enough of that to get you out of situations. The brakes are pretty good as well, to be honest. Obviously, you've got the regen helping slow the car down. All in all, it's a bit of a non-event, but in a good way. Would you buy one of these as something exciting, kind of your dream sort of car? My audience, no. You guys would not buy one of these as a dream car, something that's gonna excite you and something that you're gonna really enjoy. However, that's not to say that this thing isn't well worth having. Is it noticeably better than any other electric car? Not really. Your Kia EV6s, your Polestar 2s, is it much better than any of them? It depends what you define by better. Styling wise, no. Build quality wise, no. Tech wise, in terms of charging infrastructure, you're now allowed to use Tesla superchargers if you don't have a Tesla. So that's, the playing field's kind of almost been leveled on that. It comes down to, for me, if you just want an A to B, this is fine, your Kias are fine, your Borgo Polestars are fine. Literally any, any breed of new electric car, any new model that's coming out is pretty much absolutely fit for purpose. If you want something that's exciting to drive, get a Taycan, get a Polestar 2 with performance pack, get a Kia EV6 uh, GT, things like that. You know, with bigger brakes and they've actually focused on the handling, like e-tron e GTs and all these kind of things that actually are worth nothing secondhand now. Um, those, those sorts of cars are a bit more than the daily. They're compromised, they're full performance. That's not something that I need from this car. So all in all, I'm very happy with this car. You may well recall that the thing nearly killed me when it was brand new. It's taken a while to build the trust up back with it now, and it's not done anything to breach that trust since. It's been good as gold. Tesla sorted it. They weren't that great about it, but they did sort it in the end. Um, and I haven't felt the need to bang the drum or bash Tesla anymore. Have they paid me to be nice? No. I mean, that would be lovely. So if anyone from Tesla is watching, do feel free to send me some money, but I'm absolutely happy with it. Um, and I actually quite enjoy just sort of creeping off the driveway in the morning in a silent car. I don't use anything else for personal and sort of daily chores and daily errands. I need to take the dog to the vet, or I need to go to the shop, or I need to go filming, but I'm not filming this car. I take this one. I'm on the charging front as well. I'm getting a SeaTech wall box put in my property, so it'll probably fully charge overnight quite happily. Whereas at the moment I say it's 20, 30% overnight, which is not 
ideal. I get by on that though, between home charging and Tesla superchargers, if I'm out on a long drive, um, it finds it really easily in the sat nav. Um, I'm a complete idiot, I'm completely disorganized, um, and you literally can't really get it wrong with the supercharger network and the sat nav on here. It just kind of does everything. Um, so yeah, a, a surprisingly positive news story. I'm not an Elon fanboy. I'm not someone that absolutely adores Tesla, adores Elon, adores X, SpaceX, whatever it is he does. Um, I'm not really involved in that sort of things. I'm, I just kind of stay out of it. I couldn't really tell you anything that he stands for or that he says or does other than the obvious. So it's not me trying to be an Elon fanboy. This was just on a cheap lease deal, not a press deal, just a deal that was available to the public. I think it's 400 odd quid a month, excluding that. I put it through my business. It's obviously completely tax deductible because it's fully electric. I don't have to pay congestion charge. Um, and it's actually been quite nice jumping from the Range Rover into this not finding myself at petrol stations the whole time. I'm saving a lot of time not going to petrol stations and I actually feel like I'm saving a lot of money. I only let the car charge overnight, off peak as well. So, you know, it's it's quite a sensible way of doing it. You can set it on the menu to be just charging off peak and then I disconnect it at sort of seven or 8 a.m. when I get up. Seems pretty frugal for me. Anyway, I'm off filming something very exciting today which I will reveal very soon, but for now, Thank you very much for watching. Make sure you click the link in the pinned comment. Get involved, supports the channel, supports me, and it means that I can go and buy a Novatech 812 Enlargo S. See you later.